It's my chair. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, it must be 30. Is it yep. Oh, yeah, it's 30, is it? 31 now. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you for stopping. I get that a lot, you know. Um, well, so, hi. Hi. Um, hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Um, so thank you all for coming to, um, this is, in case you didn't know, story time with Taven. If you did not mean to be here, I do not blame you for leaving. But if you stay, nice. you're a horrible yeah, person. Demoted. 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 Demoted first. Kick, okay, we'll kick him out for real this time. There you go. Um, so thank you them. for coming. Um, if you stay till the very end, you get some Taven propaganda. Woo! And I'll tell you what that is later. Um, so let's see. Do, oh, yeah. So can everyone hear me or is it best that I use a mic? Okay. If at any point someone, some fur thinks that um, I should use a mic, uh, let me know. Especially if you're like recording or something. I don't know if it'll come out on the recording. But I can hear you really you can, well. Huh? You're coming in loud you and clear. Can hear me breathing? Okay, that's a very sexy thing. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. I'm just taking. I'm, I'm just a puppy. Um, okay. Well, uh, so let's just begin this thing, shall we? Okay. So. Um, so my first book, oh, and this is TV, everyone say hi to TV. Hi. 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 Um, so my first book, oh, and I do want to ask, has anyone ever seen any of my stories? If not, that's okay. I want to know because I'm going to be doing some that I've done before and I don't want to bore anyone. I'm, awesome. just, I'm just going to do whatever I want, damn it. Yeah, okay. please do. Uh, sure, so, so my first uh, book is Playful Puppies. Woo! Yeah. And, um, maybe you should hold oh, that. Okay. Um, so here's some puppies right there. <gasps> See the puppies play. They love to run and jump. This puppy catches the ball. This puppy pulls out a sock. It, it get, it'll get better after that hour. <laughs> <laughs> I hope anyway. Um, puppies can go high in the air. Good catch, puppy. Yeah. Puppies can jump. <laughs> Puppies can jump for a reef. Good jump, puppy. Good boy. Good boy. There he goes. Oh, and these puppies. These puppies walk in a row. It's a puppy parade. <laughs> That's what was on that page. Oh, we gotta start over. We have someone joining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> come back, come back. Great, we scared someone yeah. off already. Everyone stare at the... No. Okay. Everyone stare at the light. I will say thank you for coming. That's very... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done with my first story, but if you really care, you can watch it on my YouTube later. But thank you. Um, anyway. Hashtag self-promotion. <laughs> it's true. It's really true. Um, look at this. Oh, look. Puppies love to play with each other. Sometimes they just get all tangled up. <laughs> oh yeah, so I know it's a fur con, but I'm gonna trust every fur is not gonna go there when I read this. It's a furry convention, we're already there. <laughs> but but don't because Literature. these Literature. puppies found a bone. <laughs> it's bigger than they are. <laughs> Oh, good, you're all SFW first. Good for you. Exactly for you. We're mature. You oh. are good yes, for you. Are. Everybody, we need to start uh, checking each other for our fur fitties, figure out who's lined up being safe for work. Uh, don't touch mine. And here, it's time to go to bed. Sweet puppy dreams. Sweet the dreams. end. The end. Yay! Yay, no start over! Yay, no <laughs> Right, good. Again. 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 Because that was the most riveting, amazing tale. Told by the tales that I have ever 
hurt or see. So I might cry. Um, you start crying, I'll start crying, man. So, <laughs> yeah, let's not do it. Not yet. Wait till it's over. Then we'll all leave and we're all crying. Or you're all crying and you're like, I'm glad I didn't go to that panel. <laughs> um, Are you trying to scare our people? I'm trying. So yeah. this is... Um, we'll just say that David directs us. <laughs> this is from um, a book on politically correct story time tales. <laughs> now, I'm not a political pop, Here we go. so I'm not exactly sure what we mean by politically correct, but I'm guessing we'll find out in the course of this story. Maybe. So, the first story I'd like to read, or this story now, I'd like to read for you, and this is The Three Little Pigs. Have we all heard the story of The Three Little Pigs? No? <laughs> Wait. Yes. Yes? Raise your hand if you've heard the story. Okay, so... Because I've done this before and it turned out that no, with a different story and it turned out no one had ever heard this story in the first place and that made it for a very bad um, PC edition. So we'll try this and see how it goes. So this is the three little pigs. Once there were three little pigs who lived together in mutual respect and in harmony with their environment. Using materials that were indigenous to the area, they each built a beautiful house. One pig built a house of straw, one a house of sticks, and one a house of dung, clay, and creeper vines shaped into bricks and baked in a small kiln. When they were finished, the pigs were satisfied with their work and settled back to live in peace and self-determination. Good for them. <laughs> but their ideal was soon shattered. One day, along came a big bad wolf with expansionist ideas. <gasps> oh, uh -oh. No. Is it an American wolf? Uh, probably. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody start the USA chants. He saw the, the, the pigs and grew very hungry in both a physical and an ideological sense. When the pigs saw the wolf, they ran into the house of straw. The wolf ran up to the house and banged on the door shouting, Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. The pig shouted back, Your gunboat tactics ha hold no fear for pigs defending their homes and culture. Which is a lot more specific than, not by the hair, my chinny, chin, chin. But, um, but the wolf wasn't to be denied what he thought was his manifest destiny. So he huffed and huffed and blew down the house's sticks. I think it was straw. Yeah. Maybe it's a political way of saying it. Maybe it's a political way of saying it. Well, okay, let me start, start this paragraph over. But the wolf wasn't to be died, but he thought was his manifest destiny. So I have to talk and blew it down the house of straw. Straw. The frightened pigs ran to the house of sticks with the wolf in hot pursuit. Where the house of sticks had stood, other wolves bought up the land and started a banana plantation. Right? I found out that this was a political thing back in the 80s or 90s. But, so now we have a banana plantation. And thanks for stopping by you that this time. It's okay. I already said people do that. Um, at the house of sticks, the wolf again banged on the door and shouted, Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. The pig shouted back, Go to hell, you carnivious imperialistic oppressor. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. Um, at this, the wolf chuckled condescendingly. He thought to himself, They are so childlike in their ways, it will be a shame to see them go. But progress cannot be stopped. So the wolf huffed and puffed and blew down the house of sticks. The pigs ran to the house of bricks and the wolf was close at their heels. Where the house of sticks had stood, other wolves built a timeshare resort complex for holiday wolves. With each unit a fiberglass reconstruction of the house of sticks, as well as native curio shops, snorkeling, and dolphin shows. So this is a very complex uh, force that's going on here. We're all okay with this. Okay, good, good. Um, 
At the house of bricks, the wolf again banged on the door and shouted, Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. This time in response, the pigs sang songs of solidarity and wrote letters of protest to the United Nations. Because <laughs> that's going to get things done, right? Oh, yes, it will. I will send those pigs my thoughts and prayers. As a wolf, I had to defend the wolf in this situation. By now, the wolf was getting angry at the pigs' refusal to see the situation from the carnivore's point of view. So he huffed and puffed and huffed and puffed. Then he grabbed his chest and fell over dead from a massive heart attack brought on from eating too many fatty foods. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lesson to be learned here. Eat well. Eat well. The three little pigs rejoiced that justice had triumphed and did a little dance around the corpse of the wolf. So we got a little <laughs> morbid. Um, their next step was to liberate their homeland. They gathered together a band of other pigs who had been forced off their lands. This new brigade of Porcinistas attacked the resort complex with machine guns and rocket launchers and <laughs> and slaughtered the cruel wolf oppressors, sending a clearer signal to the rest of the hemisphere not to meddle in their internal affairs. Then the pig set up a model socialist democracy with free education, universal health care, and affordable housing for everyone. And uh, please note, the wolf in this story was a metaphorical construct. No actual wolves were harmed in the writing of this story. The end. So, so far, thank you for everyone that actually stayed. I scared some away, but that's okay. Um, what's next? What if we're just too petrified to move? <laughs> Maybe. Yay! But they've been replaced with two people. That's true. Maybe they're better people. Um, they're two better people. So thank you for coming. I just finished my second story, but as I say, if you care, you can see it on my YouTube later. Um, so thank you for coming. Um, so this next thing is, I want to give you some advice, and the advice goes. How does it go? Um, Try the rye or the Kaiser or the wheat or the white. If you want, you can have an appetizer. Stay away from the tuna. It smells funny tonight. But you just can't go wrong with the rye or the Kaiser. So that's my advice. <laughs> Woo! Just, yeah, wasn't that just great? That was so worth it. Okay. That's the next one. It was said uh, by him earlier today. You never really know what you're going to get from story time with Taven. So, again, thank you all for sticking around. Always the truth. It's it's yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Aha, uh -huh. yes. Um, so, this story is called A Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo. And does anyone know this story already? No. So, let me tell you about it. Um, uh, Mike Pence, <laughs> um, his fam so we all know Mike Pence. Um, his family has a bunny, and his bunny's name is Marlon Bundo. And he wrote a story about his bunny, Marlon Bundo. John Oliver came along, hating Mike Pence, and said, so sorry for anyone that's political and stuff, I'm just saying what happened. Um, John Oliver came along and wrote A Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo, who happens to be a gay bunny. Because Mike Pence is like not for that. And it's actually really cool because like they're giving donating money uh, from the profits they make of uh, this book. They're donating to like the Trouble Project and GTBLA and stuff, so it's actually very good. Anyway, that's the premise. Let's start. I do want to do that. Okay. There he is. <laughs> Hello, my name is Marlon Bundo, and I am a bunny. Well, actually, it's not me. I'm a pup. That's a thing. I uh, leave it on. Um, I live with mom, grandma. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, sure. I see. Yeah. We'll just make it easy now. I live with mom, grandma, and grandpa in an old stuffy house on the grounds of the U.S. Naval Observatory. That's because my grandpa is the vice president. His name is Mike Pence. 
But this story isn't going to be about him because he isn't very fun. This story is about me because I am very, very fun. Uh, this is a story of my very special day. Are we ready for the very special day of the bunny? Yeah! Good. Good. <laughs> my very special day started out like every other day. I woke up all alone. Then I ate a very, uh, I ate a fine bunny breakfast all alone. Then I watched the news um, while I ate it all alone. You see, sometimes old stuffy houses are also lonely. After breakfast, I hopped to the garden to look at the flowers and say hello down there to the bugs. Hello, Phil. Hello, Dennis. The bugs' names are Phil and Dill, Dennis, apparently. That is when I saw him. Him, right there. Ooh. He was a big fluffy bunny with the floppiest fluffy ears and the bushiest bushy tail. He was bunny beautiful. I was standing still, but being near him made, my, made me feel like my heart was still hopping. It is fluffy. <laughs> oh, there they are. Look, they're so cute. Oh, look. My name is Marlon, I said, but my family calls me Botas. It's short for Bunny of the United States. It's a long story. <laughs> my name is Wesley, and my family calls me Wesley, said Wesley. Wesley and I hopped together all around the garden. We hopped over daisies. We hopped over tiny carrots that weren't ready to grow up and be lunches yet. We hopped over Phil and Del Dennis. Which means that their little checker board game they were playing is all ruined. But they hopped, so it's okay. Once we had hopped through every part of the garden, we didn't want to stop hopping. So we hopped right through, right into the old stuffy house. Old stuffy. We hopped up and down the creaky stairs and made beautiful creaky stair music together. We hopped through the kitchen and maybe left a few bunny prints. Some maid's not going to be happy about that. I, oh, you probably can see there's, because it's white on pink, there's bunny prints on the ground there. Okay. They're clean bunnies. We hopped through very boring meetings with very boring people. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was a very good hop. It was the best hop. And I realized something. When I hopped with Wesley, my old stuffy house didn't feel so lonely anymore. We are. At the end of our hop, I said, Wesley, I don't want to hop with you without you ever again. And Wesley said, that's funny because I never want to hop without you, Marlon Bundo, ever again. And we both said, we will get married and hop together forever. Hello, everyone, we said to our animals in the garden. Hello, Phil and Dennis, the bugs, and Pimpernickel, who is a badger, and Scooter, who is a turtle, and Dill Pickle, who is a hedgehog, and Mr. Paws, which is a very good dog. Hello, all of you, we are getting married so we can hop together forever. Hooray, said Phil and Bill, Dennis the Bucks, and Pumpernickel, who is a badger, and Scooter, who is a turtle, and Bill Pickle, who is a hedgehog, and Mr. Paws, who is a very good dog. Hooray, said all of our friends, because that is what friends say. Yay. Everyone say yay! Yay! Yay, yay for participation. <laughs> <gasps> Wait! You cannot get married! <gasps> Uh-oh. We looked around and saw that the scary voice was coming from the stink bug. Uh. I, I wonder why he has white hair like that. It doesn't remind me of anyone. 
<laughs> I don't have any idea. I'm just a pup. Let me tell you a little about the stink bug. The stink bug was capital in, capital tart. He was capital important. None of the other animals could quite work out why he was in charge or how he was important, but he was. And that meant he made the rules. That meant all the animals listened to him, even though he was, and this is very true, very stinky. Can we all still hear me okay? Yes. yes. Everyone that wants to, okay. Boy bunnies don't marry boy bunnies, said the stink bun. Boy bunnies marry girl bunnies. But this is the bunny I love, said Wesley. And this is the bunny I love, said me, Marlon Bundo. Just being next to Wesley made me a little braver. And then the stinky bug said, Too bad. I am the stinkiest and I am important. I am the stinkiest and I am in charge. Boy bunnies marry girl bunnies. Girl bunnies marry boy bunnies. That is the way it has always been. You are different. And different is bad. The other animals whispered nervously among themselves. Pumpernickel, who was a badger, came forward. I am different too, he said. I eat my sandwiches crust first. Ew, monster. No, monster. that's not right. He's not a monster, he's different. <laughs> he's <laughs> yes, he did, yeah, I know. Like, he's banished from this kingdom. <laughs> I'm different too, said Dill Pickle, who is a hedgehog. I read the ends of books before I read the beginnings, just to make sure they're not too scary for me. I am different too, said Mr. Paws, who is a very good dog. Sometimes I sniff butts and I don't know why. <laughs> But everyone is different, and and different is not bad," said Scooter, who is a turtle. "Different is special." Wait," said Mr. Paws, who is a very good dog and also a very smart dog. "Wait a minute. We get to decide who is in charge. We get to decide who is important. We can vote." Yay! Yay. <laughs> so they're voting now. Yay! And on this very special day, all the animals voted on who they wanted to be in charge. And, and uh, so here on the list is, you can choose the stink bug. Your only other option is not the stink bug. So they chose, wait for it, drum roll please. They chose not the stink bug. And it was apparently, the stink bug won, not the stink bug, uh, eight. <laughs> There's not many animals in them. Hooray, said me, Miss Marlon Bundo. Hooray, said Wesley. Hooray, said all of our friends, because that is what friends say. No, said the stink bug. Boy bunnies can't marry boy bun. And then the animals say, you are not in charge. So, Wesley and I got married. We had two handsome groom otters named Muffins and Cubby, and a flower mouse, mouse named Hiccup. We ate and drank and danced the Hokey Pokey. Here they are. Yay. And here's um, Dill Pickle, the hedgehog, and it says Dill Pickle was especially good. Apparently the uh, special water makes hedgehogs very good at dancing. <laughs> and the ceremony was performed by a cat named Pajama who brought her wife as her date. And there they are there. Okay. So one more. There it is. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Sorry. He's stuck. Um, after we ate and drank and danced, we went home. Together. We have to get some sleep, Marlon. Tomorrow we leave on our bunny moon. And they're watching Wolf Blitzer on BNN. 
Why does the Youth Network, I'm assuming. Because it doesn't matter if you love a girl bunny or a boy bunny, or eat their sandwich backward or forward. Stink bugs are temporary, but love, it's forever. Yay. It's a really great story. I really love it. It was real good. It was really, really good. Um, and um, it's also cool that John Oliver, as he says, if you go to John Oliver and look up Marlon Bundo and watch his theme, um, he, he's he's uh, very happy that it helps him stick it to my pen. So. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna keep going if that's okay. Are we good? Are we good? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone say yay! Say yeah. 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 Okay, this is good stuff. Oh yeah. So we, I want to get, I guess, on the note of being political, I'd like to get political again <laughs> with um, Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> Have we all heard the story of Little Red Riding Hood before? I, I'm hoping, if you haven't, you are way too young and shouldn't be in here, <laughs> actually. Because <laughs> I know where this story goes. Um, you anyway. have childhood. Right? <laughs> um, so, uh, Little Red Riding Hood. There was once a young person, remember, so we're doing this political thing. Um, there was once this young person named Red Riding Hood who lived with her mother on the edge of a large wood. One day, her mother asked her to take a basket of fresh fruit and mineral water to her grandmother's house. Not because this was woman's work, mind you, but because the deed was generous and helped engender a feeling of community. And woman is spelled W-O-M-Y-E. No, Y-N. Because we can't be a man that woo. Um, furthermore, her grandmother was not sick, but rather was in full physical and mental health and was fully capable of taking care of herself as a mature adult. Let's get that out there and make sure we understand. <laughs> so Red Riding Hood set off with her basket through the wood. Many people believe that the forest was a foreboding and dangerous place and never set foot in it. Red Riding Hood, however, was confident enough in her own budding sexuality that such obvious Freudian imagery did not intimidate her. Oh, you go, girl! Yeah. yeah! On the way to Grandma's house, Red Riding Hood was accosted by a wolf who asked what was in her basket. She replied, some healthful snacks for my grandmother, who is certainly capable of taking care of herself as a mature adult. The wolf said, yeah, uh -huh, you go girl. Um, the wolf said, you know my dear, it isn't safe for a little girl to walk through these woods alone. Oh. Mace. Mace, yes. <laughs> Red Riding Hood said, I find your sexist remarks offensive in the extreme, but I will ignore it because of your traditional status as an outcast from society. <laughs> the stress of which has caused you to develop your own entirely valid worldview. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way, bitch. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, Red Riding Hood walked on along the main path. But because his status outside society had freed him from slavish adherence to linear Western style thought, the wolf threw a quicker route to Grandma's house. He burst into the house and ate Grandma. An entirely valid course of action, by the way, for a carnivore such as, such as himself. Then, unhampered by rigid traditionalist notions of what was masculine and feminine, he put on Grandma's night clothes and crawled into bed. So that's very good of him not to, you know, succumb to, you know, he being a wolf and everything. He can wear Grandma's night clothes. Sure. <laughs> exactly. Red Riding Hood entered the cottage and said, Grandma, I have brought you some fat-free, sodium-free snacks to salute you in your role as a wise and nurturing matriarch. Hey. 
where did where did this girl grow up, my lord? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. From the bed, the wolf said softly, "Come closer, child, so that I might see you." From the bed. Oh, sorry. Red Riding Hood said, "Oh, I forgot you are as optically challenged as a bat." Did we all get that? Because <laughs> the word would normally be, say it all together, blind oh, as a bat, but now she's optic. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying too hard. <laughs> Grandma, what big eyes you have. They have seen much and forgotten much, my dear. Grandma, what a big nose you have. Only relatively, of course, and certainly attractive in its own way. It has smelled much and forgetting, forgotten much, my dear. <laughs> Grandma, what the teeth you have! Oh, he left. Um, he got scared. <laughs> the wolf said, I am happy with who I am and what I am, and leaped out of the bed. He grabbed Red Riding Hood in his claws, intent on devouring her. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing that, but there it is. <laughs> Red Riding Hood. Oh, I'm sorry. Red Riding Hood screamed, not out of alarm at the wolf's apparent tendency toward cross-dressing. She was fine with that, but <laughs> because of his willful invasion of her personal space. Her screams were heard by a passing woodcutter person, or log fuel technician, as he preferred to be called. Log fuel technician. When he burst into the college, he saw the melee and tried to intervene. But as he raised his axe, Red Riding Hood said to the wolf, Red Riding Hood and the wolf both stopped. <clears throat> and just what do you think you're doing, asked Red Riding Hood. The woodcutter person blinked and tried to answer, but no words came. Bursting in hair like a Neanderthal, trusting your weapon to do your thinking for you, she exclaimed, sexist! <laughs> Specious! <laughs> How dare you assume that women and wolves can't solve their own problems without a man's help? <laughs> <laughs> you go girl! Let's do it together. You, you go, go girl! girl. <laughs> when she heard Red Riding Hood's impassioned speech, Grandma jumped out of the wolf's mouth, seized the woodcutter person's axe, and cut his head off. That's it from <gasps> Okay, wow. great. Um, after this ordeal, Red Riding Hood, Grandma, and the wolf felt a certain community of purpose. They decided to set up an alternative household based on mutual respect and cooperation. And they lived together in the woods happily forever after. The end. Yay. 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 Better story than Twilight. Oh my yes. god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? How many do I Finally, it took so long to go there. <laughs> I was expecting 10 minutes to start. Oh, no, we're going oh, to do it. Oh, the first time. So, we're close to done. Oh, that is, yeah. I, have, I have two more stories. Can we do it? Yeah. yeah. And then, as I say, oh, a new, new one. Hi. Hello. Um, and as I said, for anyone that's still here, even if you arrive late, I have little things that I can give you that you might or not might not want, but I'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> okay, good. So it's gonna take me good. Um, okay, so two more stories left. Um, this is the story of the three bears, like the original story. Have we already heard this before? Yes. What? Oh my lord! No one. Oh my lord. <laughs> you didn't have a childhood. You, you didn't have a childhood, that is correct. Um, well, I'm very happy then to be reading you this classic story for the first time. Everyone say yay! 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 Okay. So this is the story, and let's see, this is originally, um, is it a, what's it called, Grim Fairy Tale? No, it's not a Grim Fairy Tale. You know what it is. Who originally did three bears? I don't know. Okay, hi. Um, I just pointed at someone for no reason. Okay, so, um, the three bears. Oh, you can't say that because it popped over. In a neat little cottage in the midst of a deep woods, 
there once lived three bears. One was a great big daddy bear. One was a middle-sized mother bear. And one was a wee little baby bear. There's their cottage. One morning, Mother Bear made a big batch of porridge for breakfast. She filled a great big bowl for Daddy Bear, a middle-sized bowl for her middle-sized self, and a wee little bowl for Baby Bear. Then they all went out for a walk in the woods while the porridge was cooling. Then they, then they all went for a walk. Oh, for, I just read that. Then uh, that same morning, a little girl named Goldilocks had gone for a walk by herself. She had gone much further into the woods than she should have and found herself where she had never been before. All at once, she saw through the trees a neat little cottage. I wonder who lives there way off in the woods, she thought. She knocked on the door, but no one came. So she walked right in. So again, where are these little girls being raised up? Yeah, no one said, I'll just go walk in. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just natural. Yeah, I mean, does. Hers, of course. Born in the bar. Exactly. Um, there was no one in the living room. Well, duh. But it looked very, um, but it looked very comfortable. So Goldilocks decided to sit down and rest. There's, there's some chairs in the living room. First she sat, sat in the great big daddy bear. This is much too hard for me, she said. Then she sat in the middle-sized mother bear chair. Um, this is much too soft for me, she said. Then she sat in the wee little baby bear chair. This is just right, she said. But as she sat down, it broke all into pieces. Oh, no. She fell down because it broke. Um, uh, sorry. So Goldilocks went on until she found the three bowls of porridge set out to cool. Wonder what's going to happen next. It smelled very good, so she decided to taste it. These little girls these days. Oh my lord! I might be high. Hold that thought. She's she's sitting down to taste the porridge, and so. While we're waiting, and use your imagination, she's sitting down at porridge. Oh! Everyone say, oh! Oh! It's like a wave. Whoa! Good finger! I'm trying. There we go. Okay. Uh, and there she is sitting at the, the table. First she tasted the porridge in the great big daddy bear bowl. This is too hot for me, she said. Then she tasted the porridge in the middle-sized mother bear bowl. This is too cold for me, she said. Then she tasted the porridge in the wee little baby bear bowl. <coughs> this is just right, she said, and she ate it all up. <gasps> Why did she do that? I did. Also, how is one cold and hot? Um, well, maybe the wolf came in with his, with his medical constructive expressionist idea. Yes. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but hopefully you see where I was going with that. Then Goldilocks went upstairs. There were there was no one there either. Who would have thumped? But the bed, uh, uh, but the beds looked very inviting. So she decided to take a nap. First she tried the great big daddy bear bed. This is too hard for me, she said. Then she tried the middle-sized mother bear bed. This is too soft for me, she said. Then she tried the wee little baby bear bed. This is just right, she said. So she curled up and fell asleep. Soon the three bears came home from their walk. They could soon see that someone had been in their house. Well, yeah, because everything's like broken and eaten up. Someone's been sitting in my chair, said the father bear in his great big voice. They go by by. <laughs> Someone's been sitting in my chair, said the mother bear in her middle-sized voice. Someone's been sitting in my chair, 
said the baby bear in his baby little voice. And it's broken it all to pieces! The three pigs looked around at the bowls of porridge that had been set out to cool. So much been tasting my porridge, said the father bear in his great big voice. Someone's been tasting my porridge, said the mother bear in her middle-sized voice. Someone's been tasting my porridge, said the baby bear in his wee little voice. And I've eaten it all up! <laughs> this is what he sounds like, someone's fault. I'm just following the script. Someone's been sitting in my bed, said the father bear in, in his great big voice. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. So her voice is changing as time goes on. <laughs> said the mother bear in her middle sized voice. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, said the baby bear in his wee little voice. And here she is! <laughs> is she still there? Uh, just then, Goldilocks woke up. When she saw the great big father bear, and the middle-sized mother bear, and the wee little baby bear all standing there looking at her, she sprang out of her wee little bed and hurried down the stairs and out the door before the bears could turn around. <sighs> and then she goes running down the stairs, and if you'll notice, it looks like baby bear is falling down the stairs after yeah. her. It's like poor baby, I guess. I guess that's what he gets for... This is horrible. This what? This is horrible for him. No, yeah. yeah well, is there anything broken as all the food in it? They deserve it. Then she oh, ran and ran until she was home. It. And never again did she wander off the deep woods alone. And never again did she see the neat little cottage of the three bears. The end. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's... that's the next time I read this, I bet it's not going to work. Alright, Um Technology. Um, so, Uno Mahas, one more story, I think. Yeah, yeah. I always like ending with this one. Because it's, it's, it's great. Um, it's called Good Night. I love you. Aww. He's a pup. Yeah. <clears throat> when the day is at a close and the sunset paints the sky, Mommy Owl comes swooping in to sing her lullaby. Aww. High up on a mountaintop, the bears gazed at the moon. They share a sleepy, snuggly hug. It will be bedtime soon. <coughs> Mommy calls her babies home and gives us each one a kiss. The ducklings raise their heads up high. Each kiss, good to, too good to miss. Time to rest now, little fool. It's been a busy day. With mommy horse, she settles down to sleep in soft, warm hay. Nose to nose with mommy cat, warm in the chilly weather. Tiny, drowsy kittens are all snuggled up together. Daddy Dog tells bedtime tales before he says goodnight. One by one, the pups drift off beneath the soft moonlight. Come on, say, aww. Aww. <laughs> Time for a little elephant to get ready to doze. Daddy watches over him as his eyes begin to close. Now it's time to cuddle up and sleep the whole night through. Sweet dreams, my precious little one. Good night. I love you. Aww. Aww. Yeah.
So yeah, it's been a while. Have we all had a good time? Yeah! yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, thanks Please. for coming. As I say, I have some things, though. Don't forget. Um, I don't want to leave. I, don't, I never want to leave. Yeah, start over. Don't. <laughs> yeah, let's actually not stay or yeah, else I'll no, sing the entire Ryder Kaiser song. Okay. We don't want that. Lock the doors, doors, keep going. Move this event somewhere else. Well, there's no one in this room after us here. Let's keep going all night. Come on, yeah, let's start. Slumber party! Slumber party! Woo! <laughs> um, no, I won't bore you with all that. Um, <laughs> if you do want to see my Ryder the Kaiser, it's on my YouTube sh shameless self promotions. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, see? Oh, you weren't here for that when I did that. I don't think I was, but I, no, I did. I, I love this song. I sang it. I love Weird Al. I did it. Um, Can you help with that? I do, because there's <laughs> cake and stuff. Uh -huh. There's dirty in those books. Um, this and then while I'm doing that. Oh, 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 oh my, oh my oh, God. Stop now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it had anything important. Oh, it's it water. water. It's water. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good for water. So anyway, um, so so these are yeah. So these are Taven stickers. Everyone gets a Taven sticker. That first one and. And I have Taven business cards. That have my Twitter and YouTube on the back. Shameless hot yeah. promotions right here. Woo. Um, so everyone gets one of those. And you can throw it away. I won't hurt you if you throw it away. I'll understand. <laughs> oh, okay. And I have, where's the bag? Black bag. So I have something special. Only one in 300 of these exist in the universe. No, uh, No, it's. In the backpack. It's in the backpack. It's in the backpack. Um, so only one, one in three hundred of these were me, and so I was going to ask a question, and the first person to get it right um, gets this, because there's not many left. No, yeah, you get a straw. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a straw. I'm a straw. Um, oh, I'm a straw. There's a little. <coughs> there's a little um, there's a little um, so what question am I going to ask? Let's start with this, and I'm sure no one will know the answer. What was the... Has anybody... Well, you've seen my YouTube. Has anyone else ever seen my YouTube or anything? Sort of? Uh, yes. So, so yes? Cool. Yeah, this is it. They're in here. I don't have many left. What was the first video I ever posted on my YouTube? The map? What? Cookie with Taven? Good... Huh? Cookie with Taven? Ah, good guess, but oh. no. Actually, way before that. Huh? So no one's going to get this, so I'll just give you the answer, which means I'll ask another question. Um, it was called Must Fetch Ball. Oh, that's a long time ago. Um, what should I ask that someone might know? Like, what's my name or something? What is, what is your name? I don't know. Uh, Maybe I'll do that. Can we do it that way? Okay. So, oh, and... No, what is, I was going to say who can spell my name, but they can cheat or something. So, um, if you know my name, the first person to uh, say my name gets this thing. Is that fair? Can I do that? If, if someone knows your name, and they get it? Yeah. Is that okay. fair? Yeah, let's do it! <laughs> well, I, I haven't started yet. <laughs> this is so stupid. Win. This is so stupid. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, but I'm having fun. We're having fun! Woo! Um, okay, maybe I'll give out two of them. One about my name and then something about something else. What else should I ask? How old am I? Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll give out two of these. So first one is, how old am I? 28. I'm a pup. How can I be 28? Uh, <laughs> You're a pup. It does that guess. I'm 23. I'm <laughs> 23. I see. I'm a pup. Our pup's 23 years old. I think I know. 16. Remember my dog years? Three. Five. Huh? Any more guesses? Two. Two. Seven. Twelve. Okay. Three. We'll call that game. You win. <laughs> okay. 
Um, I am, uh, February, I turned three years old. So far, I was close. Oh, we're so talking dog get, ears. Dang it. Yeah, <laughs> dog ears. There's one. I'll go so, um, You get, and then the next person will get a table chip. It's a, well, you can see, it has me on it. Yeah.